Welcome back to part two of day 120. I'm Eric. I'm Linda, and we're going to continue our reading in 1st Kings chapter 8. Verse 37. Verse 37. And my feet are up because the heat's off and the floor's cold. So that's what this is, my knees. And so I'm trying to make just the light and read. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blessing or mildew, blessing mildew, locusts, or if there be blight. Oh, mine says blasting, mildew, or locust. Yours is blight. Or B L I G H T. Mine says blasting. B L E S T I N G. B L A S T I N G. Blasting. Oh, okay. I don't know. That's King James. Mildew, locust, or if there be caterpillar, if their enemy beseech them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be. What prayer and supplication should it, should it be made by any man or by any people of Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands towards his house? Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his way, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou only, knowest the heart, of all the children of man. So what he's saying is, God's too great to live in a house on earth. That's what we just read, right? Even though David in, or Solomon in the temple. So what now he's saying is, if anybody even comes here, or even puts their hand out towards this temple, in heaven would you hear them, God? Is that what he's saying in all this? No. Oh, okay. Verse 40. That they may fear thee the days that they live on the land which thou giveth unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning a stranger, that's us, that if not, that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of for a far country for thy name's sake. For they shall hear of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, and of thy outstretched arms. When he shall come and pray towards this house, Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place. Do and do according to all that that stranger calleth thee for, that all the people of the earth may know thy name, to fear thee as do the people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. Verse 44. So that's why so many people make a pilgrimage to Israel and pray and put a little piece of paper and shove it on the wall, right? And touch the wall. There's a camera on my computer that's actually on that wall in Israel. I can see people praying there all day long. Verse 44. When your people go to war against your enemies, wherever you send them, and when they pray to the Lord towards the city you have chosen and the temple I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their plea, and uphold their cause. If I was praying in my house, and it says that I pray towards the city of Israel, God, here's a, David saying, hear their faith. Where would I turn if I, it's east right here? So if I pray east, then I'm praying towards east Israel. So then David's asking God to hear my prayers. Oh, interesting. Okay, go ahead. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them and give them over to the enemy, who takes them captive to his own land, far away or near, and if they have a chance of heart, a change of heart in the land where they are held captive, and repent and plead with you in the land of their conquerors, and say, We have sinned, we have done wrong, we have acted wickedly, and if they turn back to you with all their heart, and soul in the land of their enemies who took them captive and pray to you toward the land you gave their fathers towards the city you have chosen and the temple i have built for the, your name then from heaven your dwelling place hear their prayer and their plea uphold their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you forgive all the offenses they have committed against you and cause their conquerors to to show them mercy, for they are your people and your inheritance, whom you brought out of Egypt, out of that iron smelting furnace. 
May your eyes be open to your servant's plea and to the plea of your people Israel. And may you listen to them whenever they cry out to you, for you singled them out from all the nations of the world to be your own inheritance, just as you declared through your servant Moses when you, O sovereign Lord, brought our fathers out of Egypt. Wow. And I'd like to add a little note to that. Because Christ died on the cross, he has made us through that shedding of blood and through all that Jesus did by dying on the cross and the shedding of blood in us, he took our sins. But more than that, more than just bearing our sins on the cross, he made us sons and daughters of the Most High God, joint heirs with Jesus. That's what it says in the New Testament. We'll read that sometime as we go through. So that means all this that is applying to the Israelites here is also applying to his chosen people through Jesus Christ. And that means if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, ask him to forgive you your sins and strive in your life to follow him and serve him just like what these people do, then God will hear your prayer just like King David here is talking about the Israelites when they plead to the Lord and asking God to hear them. Isn't that an awesome thing? That is. That even here today, we have the same privilege as those people before God did. Just absolutely amazing, absolutely beautiful. And thank you so much, Lord. I'm excited. So which verse? 30, 54? 30, 54. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying, all this prayer and supplication of the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees, with his hands spread up to heaven. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promises, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us, nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him. I pray that for my kids. That yeah. your hearts be inclined unto God. Yes, Lord. To walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And let these my words, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be nigh unto the Lord our God, day and night. Day and night. That Amen. May he may maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people, Israel, at all times that matter shall require. That all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Let your heart, therefore, be perfect with the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. Lord, let that be for us. Prayer can I do? The dedication of the temple, 62. verse 62. Then the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifices before the Lord. Solomon offered a sacrifice of fellowship offering to the Lord, 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats. So the king and all the Israelites dedicated the temple of the Lord. On that same day, the king consecrated the middle part of the courtyard in front of the temple of the Lord. And there he offered burnt offerings, grain offerings, and fat of the fellowship offering. Because the bronze altar before the Lord was too small to hold the burnt offering, the grain offerings, and the fat of the fellowship offerings. So Solomon observed the festival at that time, and all Israel with them a vast assembly, people from Labo, Hemeth, to the Wadi of Egypt. They celebrated before the Lord our God for wow. seven days and seven days more, 14 days in all. On the following day, he sent the people away. They blessed the king and then went home, joyful and glad in heart for all the good things the Lord had done for his servant David and his people Israel. So it's like an international holiday. Verse chapter 9. Well, came you may as well stop. We only got a minute or so left. So we may as well just stop there and do a third section. Wow. We can't even get people to watch two pieces. They watch one or two. Yep. It would be a miracle if they what watch we, three. Never mind. Our job is to read the word because that's what we committed to. Yeah. And so praise you, Lord, and thank you. No, it only says it's nine minutes here. Oh, I'm going to read very well. 
Okay, but it's and it came to pass that when Solomon came, that had finished the building of the house of the Lord and the king's house and all of Solomon's desires, which he, uh, which he was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time as he had appeared unto him in Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house, which thou hast built, to put my name there forever, and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And if thou wilt walk before me, as David thy father walked, in integrity of heart, and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee, and will keep my statutes and my commandments, that I will establish a throne in thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if ye shall all at all turn from borrow me, ye or your children will not keep my commandments and my statute which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. Then I will cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them. And this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And at this house which is high, every one that passes by it shall be astonished, and shall hiss, and they shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and to this house? And they shall answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have taken hold upon other gods, and have worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all this evil. Verse 10. Solomon's Others' Activity At the end of twenty years, during which Solomon built these two buildings, the Temple of the Lord and the Royal Palace, King Solomon gave twenty towns in Galilee to Hiram, king of Tyre, because Hiram had supplied him with all the cedar and pine and gold he wanted. But when Hiram went from Tyre to see the towns that Solomon had given him, he was not pleased with them. What kind of towns are these you have given me, my brother, he said. And he called them the land of Kabul, a name they have to this day. Now Hiram had sent to the king 120 talents of gold. Here is the account of the forced labor King Solomon conscribed to build the, te the Lord's temple, his own palace, and supporting terraces, the wall of Jerusalem, the Hezor, and Hezor, Megadi and Gezar. Pharaoh's king, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had attacked and captured Gezar. He had set it on fire. He killed its Canaanite inhabitants and then gave it as a wedding gift to his daughter, Solomon's wife. And Solomon rebuilt Gezer. He built up Lord Bethhorn, uh, uh, Belath, and Tabmor in the desert within his land as well as all his store cities and the towns that his horse that his chariots and for his horses wherever he desired to build in Jerusalem in Lebanon and throughout all the territory he ruled and I think we better stop there it's just a minute left and we got this and all much. the people that were left in the Amorites the Hittites the Perserites the Habasites the Jebusites which were not of the children of Israel, the children that left after them in the land, whom the children of Israel also were not uh, able utterly to destroy. Upon those did Solomon levy a tribute of bond service unto this day. But of the children of Israel did Solomon make no bondsmen, but they were men of war, and his servants, and his princes, and his captains, and rulers of, of his chariots, and his horsemen. These were the chief of the officers, that were over Solomon's work, 550, which bear rule over the people who have wrought of the work. Yeah, I got okay. it. I'm, you got only 24 yeah, but you to start. Don't have to be rushing it because we got to do it on another section, anyhow. There you go. Well, there you have it. We got to go to the third section today, or third part. Bless you. We'll be back in a few minutes.